G'day guys, welcome back to Just The Tips on the True Footy YouTube channel. Today we are going to go through round 8, which has a number of really good clashes as well. we got Carlton playing Collingwood, we got a showdown in there. Really looking forward to this round, it makes a, a good couple of rounds in a row I reckon. So to cover off how I did in my tipping last week, I'm going to be honest with you, I got 7 out of 9 and I did cheat again. I, I changed my tip last minute from West Coast to Gold Coast, but other than that, the other two I got wrong were I really backed in the Brisbane Lions against GWS when many didn't and uh, I should not have done that because the Lions were rolled quite comfortably in the end. Uh, the Bulldogs I also thought would beat Fremantle at up the stadium and Fremantle pulled out a really good performance. Other than that, yeah, the, the Eagles tip last week, I was tipping with my heart too much. I even said that in the video. I was like, I'm only 45% confident and I'm glad I changed it because uh, that one was fairly one-sided. So seven out of nine cor correct tips. Um, I'll take that. That's not too bad. I think I'm sitting right in the middle of the competition. And uh, as always, we'll shout out all the winners and leaders of our various competitions, which it's not too late to still join. You can find all the info for which in the description of this video. So let's go through how everyone went this weekend. So in our members tipping competition, Competition. We had AJKJ, 15, get a perfect 9 and a margin of 13, so well done AJKJ. And in our general competition, we had Espinoza, uh, it actually says ESPN user. Yeah, th this person doesn't have a username to get a proper shout out, but the only person to tip a correct 9 and a perfect margin. So that is outstanding going, well done. The overall leader for the members tipping competition is Chief Auto back to back. I think that's back to back to back actually. Well done Chief with 47 and 260 as the margin. And our overall tipping leader, Cristiani, I think has retaken top spot with 49 and a margin of 197. Now, Fantasy League leader, we have a new first time leader, if I'm not mistaken, Michael Bresing with an average of 2008. I'm guessing he did pretty well this round. I don't think anyone was averaging 2,000 or more last week. And now Michael, I believe this is the first time he's leading competition. Well done. I had my best week in fantasy in a number of weeks. And I still only scored 1860. I've got so much money on the bench. I'm trying to I'm trying to work it out, but I suck, I suck. So we're gonna go through round eight. Can't wait to get stuck in. Before I do, I will just uh, point out that looking at my analytics, we had a really good number there for a while of people who watched the channel regularly that were actually subscribed. That number has now dipped down. So 56% of people who are watching videos on the True Footy YouTube channel have not subscribed. So if you could do me a favor, if you wanna see plenty of AFL content, it would mean a lot to me if you subscribe to the channel, it helps me in the algorithm, also helps the channel grow in general. So those who have subscribed or are subscribing now, I really appreciate you. Great, so the round kicks off with a show down in South Australia between Adelaide and Port Adelaide. Now, these two sides have had different 2024s. That's uh, absolutely no doubt about that. The Crows have been struggling. They've had two pretty good wins, you know, a good win over the Blues, and then most recently a big win down in Tasmania over North Melbourne where they were starting to take more use of their opportunities, their forward line click, their smalls look really good. Certainly their most polished performance of the season so far, and it's come at a good time. They've got the showdown now. And the power, by contrast, I think have been looking pretty rock solid this year, save for one or two disappointing performances. Probably just one quite disappointing one against Collingwood. They're back on the winner's list this week, but one key thing that has plagued them this year is their ability to just dominate on the scoreboard. They've been getting shots on goal, they've been getting opportunities, they've been getting inside 50s, um, but beat St Kilda by just 10 behind. So this has been an interesting one because the Crows beat the Power twice last year despite missing finals. And the Power are a good side and have been for a while now. So that makes me think this game could throw up anything. I think Adelaide have had some issues this year, no doubt, with their midfield and getting the ball inside 50 efficiently. And the Power are getting the ball inside 50 and not scoring. And I think with the home crowd here, the Crows are definitely a red-hot chance to steal an upset like they've done, well, twice last year. So I'm not confident about it. I am still going to tip Port Adelaide because I feel like the Power have pretty much produced what we expected this year. And the Crows have been a bit off it, save for two good performances. I still don't trust the Crows enough, but because of the showdown factor and the fact that the Crows generally play well against the Power, it makes me nervous. So I'm going to tip the Power narrowly by about three goals. Carlton versus Collingwood. Now this one is one to anticipate because we've got Carlton who mixed bag of the fortnight, you know, one good win where they came from behind against the Giants, quality opposition, and then fell short against the very strong cat side. It has to be said now we have to give that, that validation to Geelong. They're beating good teams now. Um, so again, one from two is not too bad on paper there for the Blues, but they'll be disappointed to let that one go and they won't want to do the same thing this week against the, the Pies who look to be recapturing some of their better form. Most recent game was a draw, obviously. Anzac Day, that was a really good game. I think Essendon have proven that they're not a bad side at all this year. So not sure what to make of that. We're still seeing a lot of good signs from the Pies here. Who am I tipping though? I think I'm going to go with the Blues. I could see it going either way. 
Absolutely. I think they split the, these games one on one last year, and I think Carlton are about the same side they were in the back half of last year. Maybe not quite as impressive. And the Pies are a little bit inconsistent, but slowly but surely getting back to the product that we know that Collingwood is. So I could see this going either way, but I think I'm going to tip the slightly more strong side this year and say Carlton win narrowly. It'll be close, I reckon. I'll say less than 10 points, 7 points. Uh, we've got the Sydney Derby, or Derby, as it were, at the SCG. Two really strong sides, both Sydney sides. Well, this was my predicted grand final, and both of these sides look like a very strong team. So the Swans are coming off a big win against Hawthorne. Hard to quantify how impressive that was, other than we expected the better team to win heavily, and that's exactly what happened. And the Giants, you know, they put a Brisbane Lions side to the sword that has struggled this year, but has also played some really good footy, so I give them some credit for that result. And these games are tricky. I feel like both were close last year, and I think they split them one each. I could be wrong. I think that was the case. So I don't really know, and I don't feel like home ground matters so much in this game. I don't know. I feel like when I look at these two teams, I feel like the Giants might go deeper this year, but at this current point in time, I think the Swans have looked slightly slicker. One loss this year, I think, and it was a bit of an anomaly. That was against the Tigers. Other than that, they look pretty good. I think this is going to be close either way, but I think I'll tip the Swans here narrowly to win at home. St Kilda versus North Melbourne at the Docklands, as it were, or Marvel Stadium, as it's now called. Okay, so St Kilda now sit down in 14th. Had West Coast beat Gold Coast, which I'll admit wasn't even close to really happening, they would be in the bottom four right now, so that's crazy. And 14th, I don't think, reflects the quality of that team. Um, that being said... They have no one else to blame for them but themselves with some average performances. And against the power, you know, I felt like... I think Quain Corn summed it up best where St Kilda for a second time in a few weeks now have just left their best too late. They've scored in a flurry, either came back and won like they did against Richmond or lost narrowly and the scoreline looked a little bit better than it once did against the Giants and the power. So I, they're not playing great footy. I think they're capable of much better. So two and five is not great. On the other hand, North Melbourne, again, they've had two games in a row, and I think the Crows were bottom four at the time of this clash, and they got walloped, North Melbourne. And they also, you know, got walloped by Hawthorne, who were, and still are, 17th on the ladder. So, I, by that logic, it's hard to back them in for this game. I think we should all be expecting North to, at some point, jump out of the blocks and win a game unexpectedly and play really well. That's, that's just how footy works. So it could happen on any given week. And St Kilda at the moment look a little vulnerable, even though I do think there's a clear gap between these two sides. I think North have been a bit lackluster this year. I think well, they're going through a slump at the moment where their form and their effort isn't looking red hot, but they will fluctuate as a young team. I don't think I need to put too much thought into this. I think St Kilda should win. They should win comfortably. I think they will win. But there's always a chance North upsets someone, and St Kilda will be hoping it's not them. So I'll tip the Saints by four goals or so. Here we go, another blockbuster. Melbourne versus Geelong at the MCG. Now, Melbourne criticised a little bit, maybe maybe not criticised, but undermined a little bit for their win over Richmond. It was a bit of a tough slog game. They ended up kicking away. I think Richmond have been the sort of team, other than one or two performances this year, where their pressure and effort has really restricted the opposition. And even though there's a bit of a talent deficiency at the moment, they're missing players, a bit of a top-heavy list. I wouldn't hold that too far against Melbourne because we've seen Richmond break down, or at least get close to breaking down some good teams. Geelong, this is now entering a tough period of fixtures for them. They won at the Gabba. They beat the Blues at the MCG. They ticked both those boxes. And now they got the Ds. So this will be another test of Geelong's metal, so to speak. But it's so hard to imagine Geelong having an off day or anything like that. And while I think Melbourne has been pretty good this year and this should be a good game, I feel very confident in a Geelong win here. And this might make me look silly by the time the weekend comes. But I think the Cats have proven they've just got weapons. Their defensive sound. Obviously, the danger field injury. He's got a bit of a soft tissue injury history happening a little bit now. But that being said, I think they've shown an ability to handle it without their stars at the moment. It speaks to a good system. They do still have a lot of stars on the park as well. So I'm going to say the Cats win this by, yeah, about three goals. Got some good good clashes this round. West Coast versus Essendon. I actually hope this will be a good game. Uh, that's not controversial at all. I think this will be a good game. Um, and, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I probably looked at this fixture thinking, well, this is genuinely winnable for West Coast, but Essendon have... You know, been really rock solid this year, it has to be said. Like, what if they had one bad performance this year, I reckon, and that was against Essendon. Their other loss was Sydney. I thought they were gallant in defeat, although they lost the game by five goals in the end. They've beaten the Bulldogs, who have been fairly solid around that. They drew with Collingwood. 
They beat St Kilda. They haven't really done too much wrong. They went to Adelaide and won. Probably could have won that game by more had they been more polished. One factor in here is the Essendon, I think, have a nine-day break and West Coast have a six-day break. Now, I'm not going to use that uh, as my soapbox to complain about the fixture because I do know that we are not the only team affected. There's been a few fixtures like that that have been quirky and worthy of criticism. But it does factor into my tipping here. And I think Essendon have clearly been the better of these two teams. There's no doubt about that. I do think there is a possibility that West Coast play well. I mean, they had... A fairly poor game against Gold Coast, it has to be said. But, you know, get a few soldiers back, Harley Reid's back, Tom Barras. I wouldn't undersell the factor of a home crowd if West Coast get up and about early. So I do think this is a danger game for Essendon. And in a weird way, a strong test of what they're made of this year. Now, we know that West Coast is not at all their toughest opposition. They've beaten teams better than West Coast. But I do think there's something about going and beating a West Coast side that has some confidence now, that has some match winners in their team. That will be a test of their psyche. I, I do think either way, Essendon will be too good. So I'm going to tip the Bombers by about 26 points. But I do think there is an upset possible here. And I do know I'm an Eagles fan, but I still think it's possible. Richmond versus Fremantle at the MCG. Now, we know that Fremantle don't hold too many fears for any ground, really. They've been pretty good at winning wherever they are fixtured. It's just more about which Fremantle shows up. And we have seen various different versions of Fremantle this season, but credit where it's due, I, I didn't expect them to beat the Bulldogs. I thought the Bulldogs were in some good form, and Fremantle pulled out a performance that demonstrated they might have shaken off the slump that came, you know, after their, well, their really bad derby performance. That's probably been their only really poor performance this year was the Western Derby. So Richmond, again, few fallen soldiers. I don't expect this to be one-sided, even though I think Fremantle is clearly the better team at the moment. I think Richmond have this ability to drag other teams down. And I say that respectfully. I think we just got to be pragmatic about Richmond's playing list at the moment. It's top heavy. It's injury depleted. They fell a fair way short of Melbourne. And I do think there is a possibility they pinch this game, but I feel fairly confident in Fremantle. It's just... Oh, I've been burned with Fremantle before. I always tip them incorrectly. It's because they have been up and down. They've been eclectic. Nat Fife was really good last week. See if we can do that again. I'll tip the Dockers here. I think the Dockers should win. But again, it's absolutely no certainty. I, I do respect this Richmond side for being able to catch teams when they're not playing their absolute best. So we'll see, but I'll say Fremantle by five goals. Western Bulldogs versus Hawthorne at Marvel Stadium. Um, the Bulldogs, again, a little bit disappointing against Fremantle. It, it's hard to know with the Bulldogs. It's hard to really quantify where they're at because I think in their wins, they've looked really good, and in their losses, they've looked very lackluster, save for maybe their loss against Geelong. Like, there's been a big loss to Essendon in there. I won't be too harsh on this Fremantle loss. I mean, I think Fremantle at Otter Stadium is, you know, it's not an easy fixture by any stretch of the imagination. It's just, I'm just saying it's hard to read the Western Bulldogs. I think they've coped well at times with, um, you know, certain players missing. I think generally speaking, their effort and intensity has been pretty good this year. It's just a little bit inconsistent, that's for sure. Uh, but this week they're playing Hawthorne and it's hard to really get excited about Hawthorne. So yeah, they beat North Melbourne, obviously, and then were well beaten by a good side in Sydney, who again, I think play the MCG well, so the home ground thing doesn't factor in too much, but they were well and truly beaten. As much as Sam Mitchell says, yeah, the Hawks boys had a real crack, I think there was just such a clear gulf in quality at the moment. And I don't think Hawthorne have what it takes to beat the Bulldogs this week. Again, we could see an inconsistent Bulldogs performance and Hawthorne it would take Hawthorne's best performance of the year for sure to beat the Doggies. And I'm just not feeling it this week. So that's probably all the analysis needed. I think the Bulldogs will be too strong and win this game by six goals. Then we got the Q Clash and it is another week of rivalry games like four this week. So Brisbane looking lackluster, no doubt about it. Like statistically, they're doing a lot right, or at least they were a couple of weeks ago. Lose to the Cats by four goals at home. Um, again, not shameful considering the Cats are the only one undefeated side at the moment. But then to play at Monica and get absolutely clapped, when their season's more or less on the line, that is alarming for me. And I do wonder if it's going to start unraveling for the Lions. I'm not too sure. But this is a game they cannot lose. Gold Coast, again, another team that's hard to get a read on because I think in their wins, they've looked fantastic. And they were all over West Coast. Smashed them in possession, both contested and uncontested. West Coast were the second best side in contested ball. Absolutely schooled in this metric against the Suns. And the Suns probably could have won by more. West Coast kicked 12 goals, three. I really feel like Gold Coast could go either way. They could fade into obscurity and just win easy games at home. Or this could springboard them into a bit of form. And I don't think this is an absolute foregone conclusion, this one in the way that it used to be. I know the Gold Coast beat them last year heavily, so I think there's a chance that happens again. And you know what? I don't even know if I decided who I was going to tip in this game prior to it, but I'm losing trust fast with the Brisbane Lions. And by round eight, we've kind of got a fair read on most teams, but it's also hard to trust the Suns. It is. If the Suns win this, 
they're well and truly in finals calculations. And if the Lions lose this, obviously, I think at two and six, that is done. That is done this season. I feel like both of these sides are good contested sides. Um, your Gold Coast would be in the top six, I'd say, for contested ball off the top of my head. So that's probably where this game's going to be won and lost. <sighs> I think I'm going to tip the Gold Coast Suns in an upset here. So uh, that's probably my one upset for the round. Tip the Suns. I think I'm going to regret that, but I'm going to say 12 points. There we go. That is the round, as you can see on Squiggle here. Geelong still undefeated. Sydney is the second best side with the GWS, who lose in my prediction. Stay third and put Adelaide rounding out the top four. We've still got uh, the same bottom four as last week. The Brisbane Lions crumbling to 14th. That's if they lose. I realize I'm probably going to get that one wrong. Uh, Adelaide up into 13th, despite losing to the power in my predictions. Collingwood, again, losing to Carlton this week, in my opinion. They'll go to 11th. St Kilda rescue up a little bit of ground and they get to 12th. Fremantle consolidate 8th spot with a 5-3 and three record. That would be pretty good, assuming they beat Richmond, which I think they will. And the Gold Coast Suns, again, nudging into finals calculations. Got to respect that. They've had a really up-and-down start, I still think, but I think the good signs are very promising and the quality of youth there suggests this, this quality form could be around for a while. But who knows? They might be up and down for the entire season. But there you go, guys. Those are my tips. Let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. Game of the round is hard to pick this week. It could come from one of those big clashes like Carlton and Collingwood, Melbourne versus Geelong. Those are the typical ones. Could be the showdown, the Sydney game. That's probably my favorite one I'm looking forward to. Actually, the clash between the two Sydney sides. There is Collingwood and Carlton, and that will have more people interested in it. But I'm probably more intrigued by the Sydney Derby this particular weekend. But let me know your thoughts. Let me know your tips. Upset of the round. I suppose my upset of the round is Gold Coast versus Brisbane. Um, but I'm intrigued to see your thoughts. But for now, I'll thank you for watching. I'll thank you for being subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.